previously on Soul Pancake Does the Whole 30 Challenge. Seven people in the Soul Pancake office decided to do the Whole 30 Challenge together. And the last time we saw them, sh** was getting real. So I'm here at Disney. Um, and it's been okay so far. I haven't bought any food here. We are out here in the Los Padres National Forest eating trailblazers, which is ground beef, potatoes, carrots, jalapeno, onions, and red peppers. Whole 30 Disney is going fine. So apparently you are able to do the Whole 30 and camp. Wait, Chelsea had no problem camping on Whole 30 and Kenzie thought Disney was fine? It seemed like things were a little too easy for the group. So we decided to make it more challenging and push them to their limits. We poked the bear, so to speak. As they all headed to the conference room for a meeting, Maggie and I put out some sweet and savory surprises. And then we waited. Wait, what? You've just been poking. <laughs> We're just praying. <laughs> How do you feel? Ah. <laughs> All these walk out. You just cry, and now you're putting cheese just on my cry. I did. It's been a really rough week. I haven't eaten anything all day. Yeah, and I just want to stress eat that cheese. I want the donut. Do you want a donut? Are you ordering? We did say that we could smell food. Yeah. Oh, that's so good. Guys, I feel like I can do this. Overall, we thought that went well, and we were pretty proud of ourselves. But we did frustrate a few people. Within our group of diligent dieters, we have one special case study, Natalie. As we know, Natalie didn't want to exclude alcohol from her life for a month. I'm gonna limit it to like maybe one or two times a week. Which begs the question, could wine be a gateway poison that could lead her to unplanned slip-ups? Upon further investigation, we uncovered this gift. Could someone who believes such a truth really keep themselves from indulging in taste-first foods? So we dug a little deeper, and you'd be shocked with what we found on Instagram. This picture looks innocent at first glance, but never forget to check the caption, Baby Bottle Pops. This next photo was like a Where's Waldo game, but after 47 minutes of hard looking, I spotted it. A half-eaten cupcake. Maybe it's not hers, but maybe it is. Wait, what's this? Olivia posting about Natalie? Are they conspiring to cover potential cheating? Because Natalie seemed to be on the nice, but Olivia, on the other hand, seemed to be doing fine. I think I want to do it after all 30. I think I was gonna reintroduce wine. Duh. Without vlog footage, we will have a hard time keeping an eye on this particular subject, but we will continue to monitor her closely. So I'm setting up for our shoot tomorrow, and this is what I'm up against for the next five days. It's all of this goodness right here. Do you think anyone else has fallen off the wagon? If I'm being totally honest, I feel like every single person except for Tiffany has probably eaten at least one thing and not told anybody about it. Probably there was a slip up when they're like at a restaurant, they're like, yeah, there's probably dairy in here. I think Oscar may have inadvertently fallen off a few times. He's been out to dinner way too much. Okay, so last week I was having lunch at the restaurant across the street and I got all this breakfast food which we're allowed to get there. And out of habit, I went for the ketchup and I just poured it on my eggs. I swear to God, I didn't know. I just, I just did it out of habit, and I put ketchup all over my eggs and I ate them all. And it wasn't until that I was done with everything that I realized that I had just ate ketchup, which is forbidden. I want you guys to know that I didn't make a choice to eat ketchup. It just, I just, it just happened. But I didn't, I didn't think to myself, I want ketchup. I'm gonna put it on my eggs, even though I know I'm not supposed to. I, it just. Day 30, our participants have almost made it to the finish line. For the final day of the Whole30, a last supper was held by all the partaking soul pancakers. It's been a, a really fun 30 days, so let's do a little round 
round table. How did it go? My journey was really hard the first week and a half. I kind of had a perspective shift um, and I just was a little less hard on myself and then the last two weeks were like smooth sailing. The whole thing felt like it almost flew by for me, especially the last two weeks because everything was so busy. So I'm almost like disappointed that it's ending, but I know that that's only the camaraderie part. I went on a family vacation and we had dinner so many times and I really couldn't eat anything. But you just say no and then you eat later or you eat before. So I got, I got this cyst and I got infected and it's been, I've had it for like a year. When we started the whole 30, we started shrinking and right now it's you're kidding me. Kidding. <laughs> You're kidding me. Yeah, so I could do the whole 30. It's gone. About like a year ago, I got like a blood panel done, and my <clears throat> TSH levels came back really high, which is like rare thyroid. And for the past year, it's always come back between oh, really? like a five and a seven. Mm -hmm. And then two weeks into the diet, I got another blood test, and it was at a 3.5 for the first time in a year. Whoa! Yeah. Wow. Yeah. I feel changed. It had some very unexpected benefits. I was feeling a little more motivated because every day I was accomplishing sticking to the Whole30. Whole30 Plus is what we've been calling it. <laughs> it's the remix version with wine. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I didn't really accomplish my whole, like I want to be more disciplined and in that kind of mindset. I feel a lot better, for sure which I didn't think was going to be the case. I would totally recommend this to anybody who is interested in trying. I think everyone should do it, just to really look at the ingredients in your food. If you are being conscious of your own health, it kind of rubs off on other people a little bit. Everyone should be doing this. Everyone should at least take this step to be eating healthier. I do not think that I would recommend Whole30 to everyone. My greatest struggle with it was that it was very restrictive. And I also think it would be very demotivating for a lot of people to go cold turkey so suddenly. I think that if I ever kind of fell off the bandwagon of these new routines that I might go back and do it again. I would even do it again. But would I do it again? I don't know. I would do it again. <laughs> February 2019! But now we get to the crux of our experiment. Why do our soul pancakers think it is so hard to do things that are good for them? Having done the Whole30, I feel like it is stressful to do things that are good for you. When you do something that's good for you, sometimes you don't see the results right away. I think like once you start setting goals for yourself and like have a challenge, it kind of opens your eyes. Hard work isn't fun or sexy, it, it sucks, you know? I think that it is hard to start new things that are good for you but we are honestly so adaptable. I think it becomes easier. It's a, it's a muscle you have to exercise, you know. Although skepticism still remains among some of us, you cannot deny that everyone got some sort of benefit from the Whole30. We are proud of our Soul Pancakers that completed this challenge, and we encourage you to start a new habit that's good for you. Why do you think it can be so hard to do things that are good for you? Have you tried the Whole30? What was your experience? Let us know in the comments. Super cake.